Okay. I think I'm live. We'll see how this goes. The um, We will wait a few minutes here um, for the, um, the big show to get started here. We'll see. We'll wait for... Oh, well, there we go. Had a pop-up, everyone. Sorry. We'll wait a few more seconds here. It takes about mm, a few seconds for everybody to get uh, hooked up. Hello, Terry Lynn. Hello, Jennifer. <sighs> Hello, Jean from Minnesota. Again, I'm in Kansas. I'm in our basement right now in my wife's sewing room because she's so nice to let me take over. Uh, so that I can have a quiet room and um, kind of it has the best internet in the house. It's sort of weird that way, but what can you do? Uh, welcome to the Higher Things Bible Study. <clears throat> I am pinch hitting for Pastor Borkhart here uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, we will see how, how that continues. Um, I will be, uh, well, we're starting a new book today. Um, Pastor Borkhart finished up. Uh, Colossians, which I helped him with uh, a week ago. And so, hello, everybody. Um, so, where are we going? Well, we are going to be... We're going to be at the beginning. That's where we're going to be. We're going to be in um, in Genesis. That's where we're, we're leaping into, which would involve... Um, which would involve us getting into some, getting me into Hebrew, which would hopefully the, uh, I'm, I'm put my beard to the test today and we'll see how that, how that goes. Um, so without any further ado, I don't think, let me see how many people are, well, there's, there's, there's some people. So we'll just get started. We'll get rolling and people will join us as we work through the book of Genesis. Let's see here. Let me get, switched to the text for you. Ah, there we go. Um, so Genesis chapter 1. Um, we'll read here, or we'll take a few verses at a time to sort of move it along. In the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was um, formless and empty and darkness uh, was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God uh, was hovering over the face of the waters. So, um, I guess to start us off, uh, we don't want to try and um, put ourselves over the text. We have the text as we have it. It's God's Word. Um, uh, we could get off into Genesis and how... Um, they've tried to figure out who wrote which portions of the Pentateuch, the first five books. Um, but that really doesn't do us any good. It doesn't help us. Um, all we have is the text, the one we've received, the one that we try and weasel out from. Um, so God creates everything. That's what we're about here in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. Um, and he, he, just, he does it. The, the creation language here, is this funny uh, Hebrew word here? The second Hebrew word here is bara, and uh, this is a this is a thing that only God does in the Hebrew Old Testament. Um, God creates. We might fashion things, or mold things, or form things, or make things, uh, but as human beings, as creatures, we do not create. Um, just in the language of the Old Testament. God does that. He creates the heavens and the earth. Here uh, in 1 and 2, God creates all the stuff, all what we would call today matter, all the matter, um, all the stuff. And the rest of the chapter is God ordering that stuff. Um, each successive day orders a little bit more. That's how God does it. Um, and here again, I guess before we really get in too deep, is to mention that uh, Genesis 1 and 2 is not a science textbook. 
Uh, we have some very well-meaning Christians out there who want to defend the truth of what God says here. And that's good. Uh, but we don't want to say that this is a science textbook. Um, it's not an astronomy textbook. Um, what Genesis tells us, what God tells us in Genesis will inform how we interpret science, what we do with that knowledge, the knowledge that we gain through observation. Um, but when it comes to um, when it comes to creation, uh, all we've got is is this Genesis account. It's not science. God is relating to us something about Himself, uh, something about um, who He is towards us and who we are towards Him. Um, and as we get into Genesis 2, we will actually start seeing um, already, and in Genesis 3, um, that this is really salvation history. Um, so let's keep going here. So, uh, the, oh yes, so what does this stuff look like that God creates? Um, it's described actually as waters. Uh, that's Genesis 2. The earth was formless and void, darkness over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God is hovering. Don't like that word. Not a helpful word. Um, uh, the uh, hovering language here makes it sound like a like a spaceship, like a UFO. Like that the Spirit's like a UFO hovering. Uh, but the Hebrew word itself is actually like fluttering. Like flapping of wings. That's what it's talking about. And here we, we, we see why the Spirit in Genesis, or not Genesis, but in Matthew 3 shows up at Jesus' baptism as a dove. All this is already prefigured in the beginning. Everything's being set up for the whole rest of the scriptures. Um, let's keep going. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Uh, God saw the light that it was good. And he made a division uh, between the light and the darkness. And God called the darkness light or he called the the day the light day and he called the darkness night and there was evening and uh, there was morning uh, the first day day one um, so God here we have the word God uses his word to create everything he speaks everything um, and here John is is a good um, in information for us that the word is Jesus himself. The son of God is the word who the father uses to create. And the spirit's there too. All three persons are already prefigured, are already shown in a hidden way in the Old Testament in the first few book, first few verses of the, of the first book of the Bible. And this um, is something that the New Testament talks about, that everything in the Old Testament is about Christ and God for us. Um, and so everything that we learn about God in the New Testament is hidden um, or concealed in the Old Testament. Um, and what is concealed in the, New, in the Old Testament is revealed in the New. And so this word of God creates light and darkness. Um, and this light also points us to Christ because Christ, as he says, he is, I am the light of the world. And so already we're getting Jesus language um, in him was life and the life was the light of men that's John 1 Jesus language already here in Genesis chapter 1 so there's evening and morning um, just as an aside that's how the Old Testament the Hebrews would tell time how tell their days we go morning and evening they did it the other way around so once the Sun sets it would be considered the next day uh, and well, we sort of do that in the church still. So you'll have a, an Eve, right? Christmas Eve. Um, that's pretty much the big Eve. There's other Eves too. Pentecost Eve. Um, there's Easter vigil, which is sort of Easter Eve. Um, but the way things work in the church, we still sort of tell time that way. Um, light and darkness. Okay. Let's keep rolling. If I'm, a, if I'm a good boy, we will get through um, Genesis chapter, the days of creation at least. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters, uh, in the midst of the waters. Um, 
and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and divided between the waters uh, that were underneath the expanse and between the waters which were over the expanse. And it was so. God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and, and there was morning uh, day two, the second day. Um, so when God says stuff, it happens. And Pastor Borkart talked a little bit about this uh, in Colossians, and you get to Colossians 3. Um, when we get to the impair, when God says things, when there's imperatives given, laws given, whatever, however we want to talk about it, God's word does stuff. And so here in creation, um, it happens. God said, says something, it happens. And so if he says, you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Um, if he says, love your neighbor, then you're going to end up loving your neighbor. Um, yes, they're commands, um, but since we are creatures, not the creator, um, his word will have its way with us. Um, it will do what it says. We can trust his word. And here again, we get day, we've had day one and day two, and we don't want to try and make, you know, what does it mean by day? Well, it means day. I don't know what else to tell you, except we have the text. And the text says there was one day, and then there was a day, there was a second day, and that what God did on each of those days. So we have to not put ourselves over the text and try and say, you know, change the definition of day here. Uh, there's nothing in the text that would, would lend us to that. Um, but here we get the expanse, which will come up later when we get to the flood. That's chapters 9 through 11. But we're not there yet. Um, again, as, as I'm going through, um, we need to uh, just want to remind you that this is an interactive uh, Bible study. And so, um, I'm going to make myself big here for just a second. This is an interactive Bible study, uh, and we want to, uh, if you have questions or anything, uh, to just let me know, and we will work through them together. I'll do the best that I can. Um, apparently, I'm the, the Dean of Theology, so I'm supposed to have all the answers, but we'll see. If not, maybe I'll just punt it to Pastor Borkhart to be funny. Um, we can make him earn his keep as, as, as the uh, president, huh? So back to the text. Verse, um, verse nine, and God said, uh, "Let the waters um, be gathered together uh, under the heavens into one place, and let dry land appear." And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together He called seas. And God saw that it was good. Um, and God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to, its own, to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and morning, um, third day three, third day. Um, so, oh yeah, my beard will have the answers. We'll see if that's true. Um, that would be exciting here. Um, so here again, we have, um, we have the Lord uh, doing things, his word doing things, uh, bringing forth um, the seas, um, and bringing forth plants. Now, um, we're going to back up here because I want to make this point. I almost forgot. I got lost in it here. So, when it comes to God creating everything, in verses 1 and 2, I said everything looks like water. And, and so this is where we start seeing that this can't be a science textbook. It doesn't fit. Um, that would be us trying to put our worldview back on the scriptures that, um, to try and say, well, what sort of science 
processes are at work here. We, one, we can't know that because the scripture isn't trying to tell us that. And here we start seeing in the text itself, it just defies our scientific explanation. So one, everything, the, the matter that God makes looks like waters. And then from these waters, that's what he, when God speaks, he's speaking to this stuff that looks like water and suddenly there's light. Um, so he, reading these verses, creates light out of water. And then he also says, let there be an expanse in the water. So then he speaks again to the waters and he divides between these waters. And there's, there's waters up here and there's waters below. And then, on that's day two. Day three, then he gathers the waters into one place and draws um, dry land out of the waters. And so in these first three days, everything is made from water. So that God, with his word, he brings the word to the water and creates something. And here, um, what God does in holy baptism isn't wouldn't be surprising. When we read the New Testament talking about if you're in Christ, and that's sort of Paul's language uh, for... Uh, baptism, it makes sense that Paul would then say, if anyone is in Christ, baptized into Christ, he is then a new creation. It makes sense here when you read Genesis 1, because Genesis, as with the Pentateuch, is really, <laughs> some would say um, that there's only five books of the Bible, the first five, and then everything else is commentary. And, and when we start understanding that in the beginning, God's going to conceal everything uh, that has now been revealed in Christ, well, then that it all that all makes sense. And so in these first three days, God creates everything from water with his word. And so then God creates you, recreates you, makes you new in Jesus with the water and word of holy baptism. Yes, San Sandra, you're correct that God never said, let there be water. He just creates all the stuff and then describes it as water. Um, so water is the source of everything, or at least that's what we're, how we're supposed to, how, how we see it here. Then all the trees bring forth all their fruit, um, according to its kind. Um, and now we're starts to seeing an aspect of why is God creating everything? And so the trees have fruit and well, why? Well, they're for someone, for something. Everything's created for something. Well, we, well, we got to keep going. Let's see, day three. All right. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens in order to separate between the day and between the night. Uh, and let uh, there be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So it happens. Um, so here again, we're, we're getting this clue that everything is for a reason. And even the sun, moon, and stars are for a reason, for signs and seasons, for days and years. So again, we're like, well, what is this for? Well, we'll get there. I don't want to spoil the punch. Maybe you know the, the punchline's coming, but sometimes it's good to wait for the punchline anyway. And it was so, uh, and God made the two uh, great lights, um, the greater light to rule over the day, and the smaller light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the heavens uh, to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and morning the fourth day. So there we have sun, moon, and stars created. Um, and this is important. Um, this sets the God of the Bible against all other ancient gods. So, for example, um, in Egypt, Egypt, the big god would be Ra, the sun god. Um, 
and this is common in, in all of the the pagan religions that have multiple deities um there's usually a deity for the sun um or especially the sun right for crops i mean you need sunshine to grow crops so you're going to need a need a god to do that um but here there is no god of the sun no sun god there's just god and he makes the sun there's nobody else but him and he makes it he makes the moon and the stars too the stars aren't some um again sort of egyptian type language um the the stars aren't like the gods up there you know constellations or whatever i mean they're there um but to, to quote job the god yahweh made them he put them there they aren't deities themselves or signs of these other deities they were just made by the one true and living god which again sets him apart he's not some small some small fry amongst many he's the only show in town okay we're on day five God um, said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and um, birds flying over, uh, flying above the earth across the expanse of heaven. Sorry. Switching between English and Hebrew is a, is a little bit tricky. It goes in, it goes in two opposite directions, so it's a little hard to, to keep track of what's going on. Uh, so God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. So here we are in day five. Um, the uh, He creates the sea creatures. Again, creates out of water. He just speaks to the waters. Hey, let there be stuff in there. Living things, swarming, teeming. Um, not just a little bit of life coming from the waters. Lots of life. And then he also creates the birds. Birds of the heavens. Um, birds and fish on the same day. Um, here again, um, the waters are the source of life. That's what God uses to create things. Um, so here again is the baptismal, uh, language that, that sort of overshadows the creation narrative, uh, once we get to the new Testament and there's evening and morning, the fifth day day here would be days. Day is day as we experience them. Um, and if, you know, today we've sort of narrowed that down to 24 hours. Um, I mean, okay um but when it comes to what they understood this is just a day a day that they would experience there would be evening and there would be morning and there would be a day they didn't have clocks like we do but i guess if you wanted to you know talk about what they would observe if we gave them you know um adam and eve you know thousands of years ago a clock i yeah i guess it would it would run the same i mean the universe is running the same Nothing has really changed um, all that much since the beginning, the way God made it. Um, that's kind of quoting Genesis 11, that things are going to keep running. The Lord's the Lord of the universe. Um, but it's a day that, that you, it's the same as a day you or I would experience. That's what the text were given. And it's the text, um, once we get to Genesis um, 2, or once we get to day 6 here, it's a text that Jesus himself ties himself to. That in the beginning, God made people a certain way, and he's echoing Genesis. So he holds to Genesis, Jesus does. And when it comes to holding to Genesis, um, the way that, that it's given to us, if Jesus does that, I'm going to throw my cards in with the, uh, the guy who rose from the dead on the third day. Um, and so, in sort of, for lack of a better term, for, with, in childlike faith, we receive this story, uh, the account uh, that God reveals to us about how he created everything from nothing. Um, in the beginning, that's verse one, created from nothing, um, made all the stuff, and then he orders all that stuff. And that stuff and the ordering is very tied to water in how he 
creates the order of the universe. And it's the same way that he creates order in your universe, order from you in the waters of holy baptism. Genesis 1, verse 24. Ah, yes, here we are. Day 6. And God said, um, let the earth bring forth living creatures uh, according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and it was so. Okay, so I know I was going to read more and then stop, but I got to stop here for according to its kind. Um, and here again, we try and make this... Um, like a science textbook. So we read kinds and we read back our understanding of species into that. Um, but we don't like, cause we've got, oh, if my wife were, were leading this. She could help me out. I don't remember. Maybe somebody in the comments can help me out. So there's like, there's not just the speech. There's the different kingdoms. There's phylum kingdom, all that stuff. Um, we've ordered it in, in such a way and we don't want to read that scientific understanding back um it just again this is describing well there's such things as you know horses and and um and cows and snakes that sort of thing and whether that means you know how we classify um the rat snakes that show up in my um garage in the spring and the fall as we characterize that as that sort of snake as distinct from like a rattlesnake that you would find out in the well some of them would be kind of in the, the other regions of kind of around me um there we go look at look at lestico helping me out um we'll get to that so it's uh yeah so kingdom phylum class order genus species yeah that's not what the scriptures mean by kinds um, we don't really know what it means. And there are some Christians that are like devoting their energies into figuring out, well, what does this mean? Okay. But is that really the point of the scriptures is to tell us how to, um, I mean, it, it helps us understand our place of things that God created everything in six, in six days, rested on the seventh, um, created everything. We didn't create anything. Um, we fashioned things from what he created. Um, helps us understand that relationship, but it's not meant to be like, okay, in our biology class, now we can say, um, kinds means this. Um, all these scriptures are meant to tell us who God is, who he is for us. And, um, so that means he's created us and that means he saves us. Um, those two things. And, and that's what the scriptures are about, including Genesis one. Um, so we don't, we got to watch out for reading back our understanding of the universe based on science. Um, because that's not the point, that's not the Lord's point as he speaks through Moses here in Genesis 1. So what does God keep doing? Genesis 1.25. Um, and God made... Uh, the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. Everything's always good. Most days. Some days don't have anything that, that God's like, it's good. I mean, you can assume it, but... Um, so everything is good. Ah, yes. Um, and God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And let them have um, dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and the beasts and all the earth and all the creeping things that creep on the earth. And God created uh, man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So here God makes man. Um, beast versus livestock. Uh, sometimes I, beast, livestock, sort of the same thing. There's beasts of burden, right? That's sort of the older way of talking. Livestock is the newer way of talking. We sort of have a, 
So you had a different understanding of beasts, not like wild beasts, um, but more like beasts of burden. Um, so that'd be like livestock. Uh, so God here says, let us make. Um, and here we get the Trinity sort of hinted at already in Genesis 1. We had it uh, in the first three verses. We've got God making. There's the Spirit and God speaks. There would be the Word. Something that's revealed fully at Matthew 3, the baptism of Jesus, where you have the Father speaking, the Son standing there and the Spirit hovering, fluttering uh, as a, in the image of a dove, like Genesis 1 sort of hints at. And here, let us make man. And some want to say like, oh, this is some sort of royal use of the we. Um, and I just, the, it, the scriptures don't really do that. It's a very uncommon way for God to speak. There's only this one. There's only three occurrences where God refers to himself as us. And this is one of them uh, here at creation to make mankind. To clearly show that uh, this us language is the Trinity. So that God, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all, all three persons have a vested interest in you and me. Yes, they all help create everything. I mean, don't get me wrong, they do. All three persons are involved in the creation of the universe. But here we get special mention that God has a conversation in himself about creating you and me. We are that important to God. And we are this we know we're that important to God. For him to take special time to have a have a, a, a huddle up before the, the final play of of creation. Um, that and we know we're that important because the Son comes and dies for us. And we're already shown how the care of God in a first article sense right here. Let us make man. Um, so there, in the first article sense, God is um, shown his, his care for us, all three persons, in a first article sense, in creation sense. Again here, God creates man in his own image. Bara is the Hebrew word for it. Only God does that. Um, and here it's like poetic. It helps you remember. God uh God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And this is the verse that Jesus is referring to in Matthew 9. Lestico can help me out with that. Um, I think it's Matthew 9. And so again, this that that where Jesus references this text anchors Jesus to Genesis. And if Jesus receives Genesis as, as true, then I'm going to receive it in the same way Jesus did because he rose from the dead. And so I'm going to go with him. He is the revelation of, of everything. That's Colossians is big on that. And this is, this book is no different. Um, so I'm, again, we throw our cards in with Jesus and what Genesis says is true. It's the text we've got, and we believe it. Because, um, well, because Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, um, that's the true. That's the true source of our faith. That that's the true historical event. Uh, we don't want to start running things, and we believe this because it's God's word as some sort of abstract concept. Um, but rather, it's all rooted in the person and work of Jesus. Um, otherwise, if it's some sort of, you know. God narrative that fits our definitions, well, then that will change. That will change. But if it's all tied to Christ and what he says and does, well, then that's what's certain because in him we see the God. We, we see God. He's the, the revelation of, of God to us. And God blessed them and said to them, um, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and all the living things that creep on the earth, that move on the earth, that team on the earth, crawl, creep, creepy things, the creepy crawlies. 
And God said, Behold, I give to you every great, every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree um, with its with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, for eating, to eat. Um, and here we get why everything is made. I mentioned this with the days when, when God created the plants. And then he created the sun, moon, and stars after that. Talk about defying science. God creating the trees and the plants before their sun? Huh. No photosynthesis. Well, no photosynthesis according to... Well, I guess there's hydroponics and stuff now, but isn't that interesting that there's no sun for the plants to grow? It creates those first. Anyway, um, here we see why God created the plants with fruit in them so that you and I would have something to eat. And then this lets us know that he created the sun, moon, and stars for times and, for, uh, times and seasons and days and years uh, for you and for me. So the entire universe... From the, from the stars in the heavens, um, all the galaxies, all that stuff, beautiful stuff in the, in the night sky, all the way down to the seeds that we plant in the ground, in the ground itself, and the, all the animals. It's all a gift. All of creation is a gift from God for you and for me. And we are to, um, to care for it, to be stewards of what God has give, of the gifts God gives us. Um, we are to, uh, yeah, care for it, care for creation. That's what God gives it as a gift. Um, pretty amazing that you could, when we look out in the, in the Hubble telescope that, you know, sometimes we get lost in, um, you know, the, the majesty of God or something. Um, but rather it's all meant to be a gift for you, for us to enjoy. To look at that and wonder that God created this for us to enjoy. Um, oh, nice, nice Lestico. Um, he create. He also creates the the light before there's sun, moon, and stars. And then there's Revelation, where they we won't we don't actually need sun, moon, and stars because the Lamb is the light. Like I said about day one, the Lamb Jesus is the light of the world. See here, 1 th verse 30. Uh, and to every uh, beast of the earth and, and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. So here again, everything according to Genesis is vegetarian, um, a reality that will be restored as Isaiah talks about eternal life. Um It'll be restored to that, you know, the wolf lying down with the lamb, that sort of language. The lion will eat straw like the ox. So eternal life in the Old Testament is pictured as Genesis restored, Eden restored. God setting things back to the way he intended them to be after we rebelled and threw our lot in with the devil. In order that we would be try and be king. Um, which then would let us know that well, why did, well, then why do animals have sharp teeth? Well, I don't know, but maybe we will don't, we, it's impossible for us to understand. We can't actually understand the universe according to science. If we're going to, I mean, we can get a picture of, you know, here a lion, you know, has these teeth, has these claws, eats this animal, whatever, the biology of all that stuff. But that isn't the way God intended it, not according to this. Not according to the way it was in the very beginning. Um, which lets us know that if we're going to try and read back in, well, that's just the wrong way to go. Because this lets us know that we can't possibly understand why God created a lion. Because according to our thing, we would say, well, it's seed zebras and whatever other things are on the Serengeti. Uh, for, you know, so the ecosystem has proper, you know, population control between all the different animals. Well, duh. And we look at this and we go, well, maybe that's not the way it was supposed to be at all. Well, what was it supposed to look like? I don't know. We messed it up. But I do know that Isaiah talks in terms of eternal life, the restoration of creation, returning back to this reality. That we don't have to worry about predators anymore because they're not going to try and eat us. 
again, defying kind of what we try and do with Genesis today. And is it true that it happened? Yeah, it happened. The way it laid out, that's all we've got. And Jesus rose from the dead. And he held to it as the way we have it. So that's the way it is. Because Jesus rose from the dead. Um, and God saw everything that he made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Okay, it was very good now. So it's sort of the refrain. There's a refrain each day, not just there was evening and morning, whatever day, whether that's day one or this or the first day, the second day, the third day, whatever, um, is this is good. But on the last day, everything is very good. God looks at all the things and it's very good. Humanity was very good. The stars are very good. The waters, the fish, the birds, everything very good. We'll keep rolling here because we want to finish up to day seven. Uh, and the heavens and the earth and all their hosts were finished. And God, and on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. So now we've got seven days. God created everything in six. Six days. Uh, day means day. Um, six days. And on the seventh he rests. And this shows the flow of the Hebrew week. So they work, as we would count the days, Sunday through Friday and the Sabbath being on Saturday, where God rested from all the work that he had done. And this is ultimately fulfilled. Well, not ultimately. So this is first article finishing of work. And just like um, salvation delivered to you, making you a new creation, echoes Genesis 1 because God created everything from water. He creates you new in Christ with water too. So also second article, completion of God's work, is Christ resting in the tomb on the seventh day. Um, that's the day that he had finished all his work. And here we get Christ also saying it is finished, right? He finishes up his work and then he rests on the seventh day. Um, so all that language in John echoes here. Um, and yes, John um, could also echo Jesus's it is finished also echoes the high priest with sacrifices. Um, but here we see it also ties us again to Genesis so that from beginning to end in the Gospel of John, you could almost say that John is a commentary and a clarification on what God did in Genesis, in Genesis 1. So you've got in the beginning, God created, let there be light. In John, you've got um, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. and The word was God. He was with God. Um, and he was life, and the life was the light of men. And then you fast forward, that's John 1. You fast forward to John 19, and Christ says, It is finished. And since it was the day of preparation, they put him into the tomb, in the garden. And all of a sudden you're, well, just the same way with creation. God finished up on, the, on that day, and he rested. And then there was also a garden. But we're not there yet. But we're out of time. So I thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, we will see you tomorrow at the same time, same place. Um, we finished up the, the seven days of creation. So we will start with um, a, a little bit zoomed in view on the creation of man. And maybe we'll get into Genesis 3. I don't know. Uh, if, if you've got any questions about today, I'd answer them tomorrow too. So just let me know. Come with your questions. Come with your interaction. And we'll have fun together. See you tomorrow.